Check one, two, test. Test one, two, check, test one, two. Check one, two. Thank you. 
Hey folks, uh, let me know if you hear everything okay. Test one, two, check. Test one, two, check, one, two, test, 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 test. <laughs> It's a bit of Ray Charles today. It's always a good way to transition from uh, people playing the blues to blues-based songs with blues-type melodies. Uh, not everything is, that Ray did was written by Ray, of course, but uh, he turned it into his genius way of approaching a song and making it sound soulful even when he does a country song that that he uh i think he wrote that one it comes off being uh blues based anyway uh who's out there hey clive hey steve everything sound good great we're gonna wait about another maybe two minutes then we're just gonna i got a few examples to show you we'll take a look at some of some of ray's iconic tunes like georgia and and uh uh Hard times, uh, you know. Again, so some hard times. I think was written by Joe. Uh, I'm sorry, by by um, by Ray. Uh, you know, Georgia was Hoagie Carmichael. Um, Drowning in my tears. I don't really know who did that one. You guys may know. Uh, and then there's a lot of tunes that are that have, uh, you know, what I call like the R&B kind of traditional sequences and and. Uh, we'll wait a few more minutes, and I'll I'll post a few of those sequences up there. You've all played them, I'm sure. Uh, you know, but um, I've always been, uh, you know, um, I've always been a believer that when people said R and B, and that's what they played, it was kind of based in rhythm changes, which is the George Gershwin set of changes one six two five one six four five with the cycle five bridge which I'll get into at some point, you know, and talk about rhythm, um, and the blues, you know. So there, there's a, a lot of those. There's a lot of the sharp forward diminished stuff uh, that we'll talk about. But uh, let's give it about another another two minutes, and then I'll, we'll hit, with the, hit on the topic. Um, I got some other upcoming stuff going on. Um, the first two weeks in July, I'm going to be down at my house in, in St. Augustine, Florida, so I won't be doing any live stuff. Uh, I don't want to just do it off my off my uh, laptop because I like having the the green screen and popping up popping up the stuff back there and being able to to throw some examples up front so you guys can look back and and see the actual notation. Um, I don't know 
how how uh, well versed everybody is in actually reading notation or not, but it's good to have it up there. Uh, help explain it a lot easier. Um, all right, if everybody hears me well, uh, you know, let's let's chat about let's chat about uh, the genius of Ray Charles. All right, um, I'm going to toss up uh, a thing I just jotted down right before I went on. And it was examples of what a lot of these tunes that we're going to see make use of. These guitar, se these uh, chord sequences or chord, chord um, progressions are very common. At least I found in a lot of a lot of R and B based tunes. Um, they're they're just all over the place. Not necessarily R and B based, but um, here's one. And if you take a look at it. Uh, the first example, it's a lot of R&B tunes start out with that. Either it starts on the five augmented chord, right? In this case, I'm doing it in G, and that's, you know, or it starts out with. So, if you, so for the key of G, the first change would be, if it was the five chord, I'm sorry, it would be this. And then. So let's look at the first one. We got a one chord, which I like to call it, make it a major six chord to not give up the dominant seventh right away. Um, and then we go to five. So it's one, five, one. And we'll see this in the upcoming songs that we analyze. And then it goes to the five chord, taking us to this five, seven, a four, going to the four chord, which is gonna be a dominant chord, because remember, Early on, we discussed that that um, as opposed to being a diatonic progression, blues blues oriented songs usually turn the one chord and the four chord into dominant sounds because of adding the flat seven or the blues note, or in this case, I call it the chord tone. Uh, but that all comes from the Afro American influence of uh, the street hollers and playing, you know, flat sevens, flat fives, uh, flat threes. And they become great melodic tones as well as harmonic tones. So, uh, so then you go uh, again five seven to the four, but I'm calling it four seven, not four major seven. Okay, it could be a four six. Then a sharp four diminished seven, and back to one. Sorry. So here we go. So that's that's the analyzation. You'll see that in a bunch of the songs coming up. Uh, if there's any questions on that, uh, if you th if you think about it, let's let's just analyze that. If you're blowing on it, so if you got G, right? Then we got the five, the diminished chord. So I, I targeted again, like we discussed earlier on in my, my live stuff, target the chord tones. Um, one more time. And, you know, the other thing is if you notice, if you're playing the C7 chord, Of, a lot of times you'll hear that harmony going to the C, to the C sharp diminished, and then to the one chord with the fifth in the bass. All right, that's a, that's a very typical gospel kind of thing. I I, I would think I that's where I hear it most. Um, second example that you should get um, 
under your fingers is a five seven of six. I hear that a lot in Ray's songs. Five seven of six if we're in the key of G, the six is E minor. Five seven of six would be a B seven of some kind, probably a sharp five, flat nine, not necessarily. Sometimes Ray uses a natural thirteen, which is very deceptive. And then he goes to E minor. It doesn't matter, it's a B seven. You know, use your ears, it's it's your poetic poetic license to do it. Uh, and here's what that would be. And then you have six, flat six, two, five to four. Here it is again. Another very common thing in uh, in R and B tunes, especially in in these ones that we're going to discuss of Ray Charles. Um, here it is. If you if you're going to blow on it, uh, again. Any questions on those right now? Last but not least, this is going to start on the four. I'm making it a four six chord. And then we're going to go to the sharp four diminished. People are mowing their lawns outside. And then we're going to take a look at a bunch of sequences. And I did this in E flat because it's a direct uh a direct rip from uh hard times. And uh it goes to the one seven, then it goes down to the flat seven, and which is D flat, right? To the six, to the to the flat six, to the five, to one. Or if you look down further, there's the real elaborate extended analyzation of what's five seven of six to five seven to five seven to flat five sub to the five seven to the two. It gets to become redundant, but um, you know that's the Berkeley thing kicking out me. Uh, you know, as far, as far as I, I just see it, you can make them all dominant chords and put a Roman numeral on, on it, which I think they do mostly in, in Nashville anyway, and a lot of the other places. But that's kind of like, you know, it's kind of spawned from the diatonic harmonic a analysis that, that people have done. So here's what that is. time any questions on those uh, I'll, you guys got a clear view of my hands in case you want to uh, hello Mary Taylor <laughs> Haven't you had enough of me already? <laughs> so, uh, you know, so that that's some little excerpts of the things that I've seen in the Ray Charles uh, songbook that always reoccur. Uh, so let's let's first take a look at at hard times, and then we'll jump to uh, drowning in my tears, and then we'll go elsewhere. And there's some other tunes that are greatly influenced by other people. Here's hard times, let's lose this analyzation. Okay, hard, st hard time starts out with, it's in the key of E flat. I made it an E flat dominant seventh chord. Make it a little bluesier. Um, and, uh, what I did the first chord is that sharp five or uh, B flat nine flat thirteen because the melody is my my mama told me right so 
So that is the nine, and below it is. There's the one chord. It could be a one six chord. Then five seven go into six, but he goes chromatic, which is five seven of flat five sub to where you're going. Okay, so that's like a D seven, but it sounds much hipper as a flat five sub because you have chromatic motion to this. And then here's that. And here's the E flat, the A flat six. And here's that thing in my example number three. And it starts again. So you see that, that direct relationship between the examples and that. It's pretty common. Uh, you know, I think that race, race choice of songs, well, he, I think he wrote this one. I'm pretty sure he did. Um, hey, Jeffrey. Good to see you, buddy. Um, so uh, let's, let's look at it one more time. We got the nine, nine sharp five, a flat 13. And then one. And it could be this. One six, then the chromatic into here. I mean, that to me is awesome. Okay, now. Check out where it goes uh, uh, during the, the, I think it's the third or fourth ending, where he does this great group of turnarounds, where he goes to the, f to the four chord, then he goes down a whole step to G flat, then to E, and then it resolves back to E flat. So here is, uh, I'll take it the last time through of the A section, but I will take the, uh, uh, I guess what's called the fifth ending. I didn't mark it there, but uh, it replaces the B7 and the B flat, and then it goes somewhere else. So here it is. Oh, sorry about that. into his last verse. a great turnaround very deceptive one going from here bringing you back to the top um, and then the ending's pretty uh, kind of deceptive right because he's walking down so that's hard times now, let's take a gander at Drowning in My Tears, which is not one of his originals, but he, uh, this has a lot of great moving bass lines to it, uh, if you chose to do it. Let's lose this one and bring this over here. Okay, here we go again with the sharp or the augmented chord starting the song, right? Brings a tear, right? And he walks it up. Here it is again, sharp four, diminished seventh.
back to the four. Here's the show for diminished seventh coming up. And see how he puts the A flat in the bass? Then the A of the bass of the F7 chord. Sorry. Four. Here we go again. If no, of course, it's going to go to the sharp or diminished. <laughs> you back to the top of what he does is he goes one six five seven of uh, five seven of two uh, five seven of five rather five one then he goes to the four back to the one so um there's a lot of great things in there, but again, it's four sharp, four diminished. Uh, he does those walk-ups, which are pretty cool. Um, you know, uh, I, I kind of took this and I listened to what was in the base of, of the arrangement. Uh, it makes total sense when you go to, to the sharp four, the four, to the sharp four, and then put the fifth of D flat in the base, and then the third of F7, and then B I'm having a little bit of fun with it. Anyway, um, let's just look at the four sharp, four diminished. We, you know, we saw it in a few other examples. Uh, let's just take it uh, back to our first example, where if if you got a four chord and it's a C7 chord and you've made it a, a four seven, that's only the same chord except a flat nine version of it. Uh, C sharp diminished seventh is the same as a C7 chord. It just puts the flat nine in the bass. So again, when we go back to our diminished stuff, you know, or dominant diminished stuff, you move any note, and it could be that. So if I, so if if, if this is this C sharp diminished is going to go back to G, okay, okay, I can consider it a C seven. And it's back to G, right? I can think of it as an A seven. You gotta give us an F sharp seven. And what have I missed? I did A seven. 
Uh, I did C7. Uh, E flat 7. Right? Here's E flat again. Okay, so it could be any of those. Your choice. Um, uh, you know, if you're talking traditional stuff, I guess you could say it's uh, it's an A7 chord and it's you know, sharp five maybe, and it's going to bring you back to some kind of a D minor, which it really doesn't. It brings you back to a, a G chord with the D in the bass, which is not a D minor chord. It could be considered a G7 chord, sure, right? Because it's two five. Uh, that's that I think is what I hear when I play on that. Uh, I hear that as an A7 chord. I kind of hear it as an A doing this. Um, that's that's if my ear was going to say that, what it hears first I guess it would be that anyway so that's uh, drowning in my own tears now um, let's just look at the now song of the state of Georgia I'll pop that up there All right, this one has a few uh, slight reharmonizations to it, but but you'll get it because if you know if you have a B seven chord and it's approaching, we talked about this in the past. You can put the related two chord to that dominant chord. So if you look at this, it's again another one that you you know that same kind of movement of getting the um, two five or the five seven of six under your fingers. I mean that's an important movement in in uh, in tons of songs in all songs anyway uh, so uh if you look at this it starts out with a one and he uses a major seven chord um, now it goes to b7 And you know, again, B seven. What would be the two chord that traveled with the beat with a B seven F sharp minor seven flat five? Okay, uh, it, it could be minor seven flat five. It doesn't necessarily have to be. It could be just a minor seven, F sharp minor seven. That sounds a little bit more deceptive. Um, the the F sharp minor seven flat five has the C natural in it, where this that's kind of more deceptive. You want to hear? I think would want to hear that two five going to major, but. There's, there's no such thing as rules in music, you know. Um, so anyway, uh, so that's what that's what occurs there. So so we have and that is only E minor seven to A seven, because this C sharp, as we said before, C sharp it's a C sharp diminished or an A major with A major with A major with C sharp in the bass. Um, it's two five. And this is a little chromatic. And that brings me back to one, because F7 is a dominant sound, bringing me back to one. That's all the altered dominant things that we talked about. And then five, seven of two, two, five. And then three, five, seven of two, two, five. And they made it as an augmented chord. All right. All right, so here's, here's the beginning of Georgia. One chord, two, five, or six. Six, put the flat seven in the bass to five, to the five of that six, making the two, five progression, passing chromatic two, five, back to one, five, seven of two, to two, five. To five. Little turnaround. Now, I'm gonna take that same thing and I'm gonna embellish a little more and I'll try to spit out what I'm doing, all right? So here we got, one, so here's what I did, one, 
this flat five sub is going to be an F7. I put the C minor in front of it. And C minor, and then F7 takes me to E minor seven, E minor. Then I went, I turned this into two five going to C, but I didn't go to C. I went to C minor, and then, and this is just an altered turnaround. Back to our, my turnaround things, which we discussed, oh God, probably like two of the two of the things ago. All right. Um, now I'll I'll point out something that's that's uh, I guess pretty cool. Uh, and all we really do when we get to the bridge of this, it has a separate bridge, and it goes two five to the to the six minor. Okay. Uh, so we got. And that A minor 6 is, brings you back to that. And the C sharp diminished is a C7. I marked it there with the little parentheses. It's really a C7 with the flat 9 in the bass, right? And then we got back C sharp diminished. Is now we're going to call it an A7 chord. It's the same chord, right? Then E minor. And that little cliche line, E minor major 7. E minor 7, and this is E minor 6, but it also could be called a C sharp minor 7 flat 5, F7, and a turnaround. And it could be any turnaround. <laughs> you name it, it all works. And it's a turnaround back. Now, here's just on gigs, I inadvertently tie these songs together here's the other song i tie it together and you can see it is pretty much the same <coughs> a section pretty close to the same a section anyway um and it's this chord some some folks like to get away take a holiday hop sorry take a hop. some folks like to get away take a holiday from the neighborhood to the sixth chord on the bridge. Da, 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 do, do, da, da, da. Then it does a few two fives, makes it different. Da, 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 do, ba, da, da, da. Sorry. Anyway, so you can see that Billy Joel was greatly influenced by that in uh, New York State of Mind. Uh, and here's a few of the songs that I wanted to throw in here that have the 5-7 five, seven, uh, five, seven of, uh, of 6. And uh, that is one that's not ever thought about. And it's um, a Dylan song that we've heard uh, a great version by, by uh, well, a lot of people, but one in particular I heard of um, on a live concert with uh, Eric Clapton. And, uh, and he played Don't Think Twice. And you can see it in the beginning, okay? That's the intro.
can't be any more clearer. So you have the five seven of six, then the, the flat seven, then the bass taking you to the four chord. You know, the only difference he does is he goes right to the five chord, which is a just four five or two five, however you want to play it. Um, uh, he doesn't go to the sharp four diminished, but it has that five seven of six. So that's a pretty prominent sound uh, in a lot of uh, a lot of tunes. It's it's just you know you, you get it in your ear, you'll hear it come up come up. A, a number of tunes. I mean, you know, throughout the course of the night, uh, uh, you know, there's so many songs that have the, that kind of uh, uh, bass motion. Um, I guess what is the, the, if I had to say what the deciding factor of what makes it R&B and what makes it, you know, like, you know, like your typical standard, let's just say Stella or Autumn Leaves or How High the Moon, is that the, the dominant sound, the flat seven sound is very prominent uh, either on the one chords, on the four chords. So it has that bluesy sound. Um, uh, I love playing on, on the American Songbook standards uh, without a doubt. They're always fun. Um, they always pre present a, a new challenge, but so does any of these. And heartfelt-wise, my heart seems to lean towards bluesy bass standards, you know. Um, you know, uh, God Bless the Child, uh, any of the Ray stuff um, always has. He always throws in that flat seven. If you if you listen to the way he sings and the way he phrases, it always has th has that stuff going on. So I think that flat seven is a uh, is what is, what is the defining thing in a lot of the tunes. Uh, uh, that I guess we can call R and B tunes, if you so have to give it a handle. But five seven of six and uh, sharp four diminished seven uh, is a thing that you should become aware of and and know how to get them under your fingers when you're playing on it. Again, a sharp four diminished seventh chord, and again I'll go back to the key of G. So if, is if it's C seven, if you look at my my hands. And I'll change cameras if you want. Um, to my tighter shot. And you'll see that here's a C7 chord, and here's a C sharp diminished. And you see that, you know, it, it's a C7. Above is a C7. And that is a leading note that takes you usually to the five or the fifth in the bass of the one chord, even if it's a one seven chord. All right, and if you're used to doing this on the dominant seventh chord, on the C7, there is your uh, C sharp. So if I was going, And that brings me back to one. So, nothing to be uh, shaken by. And the same thing uh, when you go five, seven of six. Think about this. What is six? Six is nothing more than the t a tonic chord uh, in the key of G major. So a B7 and a D7 and an F7, uh, they'll all take you to the to that. I'll show you some demonstrations of that. Let me just change my camera angle again. All right, so here's my here's my targeted chord E minor, right? So here it is as an F7 taking me to E minor. Here is my B7. Um, what is the other one? Here's D7. Okay, because if D7 
57 can take you to G, it can take you to E minor. Uh, what did I miss? Uh, I gave you F7, uh, A flat 7. <laughs> so they all, it's all part of that dominant approach. Uh, anyway, any questions? Who's still out there? Who's still hanging with me uh, through all of this? Uh, banter any questions on the Ray Charles thing I got some stuff I want to uh, announce uh, before before I wrap it up next week I'm going to do uh, a thing on chord voicings um, and how I created my way of thinking of three note chord voicings uh, how I comp bass lines with the chord voicings um talk about you know some drop twos and drop threes and things that are all berkeley terminology um i think that's the topic and i'm going to do it on monday at four o'clock for the only reason that um uh thursday i'll be heading out, heading out of town so um let me just see what else i had plan for that one let's see do you know versus chord oh oh yeah and and how how to go about building a chord melody um you know the simple the, the beginning approach to building a chord melody putting the melody on top and uh you know and um and stuff like that thank you clive i, I hope it i hope everybody uh uh, got some benefit out of out of this one today. I was just in my Ray Charles m m um, mood, and many people have asked me how can I transition from playing the blues to to playing other song forms. And Ray's to me is like the best uh, uh, the best vehicle or the bridge to to cross over and start to make use of that stuff. So, uh, if, in, in in a quick synopsis, <laughs> get under your hands five seven of six. All right, and get under your hands a sharp four diminished, and um, you know, and all that stuff, because those are the two movements that are a little bit different than the basic blues, but um, uh, blues nonetheless. I always put a sharp four in there when I get to the four chord, sharp four diminished. Uh, so anyway, and you know, I'm sorry, uh, and I'm sorry you 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 missed it, uh, the earlier part. You can re rack this whole thing and watch it a zillion times and listen to my banter. Um, but anyway, so next week I'm going to do Monday at 4. I'm going to talk about chord melodies. I'm going to talk about three-note voicings. Um, and uh, what else did I say? <laughs> These, uh, oh, and how, how to create bass lines while comping the chord changes or how I approach it. There's a million ways to do it, uh, I guess. Um, and how I, how I made the approach to, to doing that, um, uh, to hooking those kind of things up. Uh, and... Uh, I started another thing on 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 Saturdays, uh, and um, I think it was well received. I did it with my good buddy Jeff uh, uh, Jeff McElane last week, and my first interview. And uh, you all, from me being here, know know uh, uh, about Jeff, who Jeff is, and another guy you should you should get to check out on YouTube if you have not already. Uh, had to he. Um, uh, had the great opportunity to be side man with Robin Ford. I can't beat that. That's a great thing. Um, so I did it last week, and I call it the guitar chat. This week, uh, this coming Saturday, I'm going to start doing it probably every other Saturday when I get back from from my my run to Florida for two weeks, probably mid July. Every every Saturday at uh, every other Saturday at some point, I'll let you all know. Uh, it's going to be a guitar chat. Now this Saturday, <coughs> check it out. Uh, uh, fondly, um, I call this gentleman my adopted, slightly older brother. <laughs> we grew up in the same town of Fort Lee, New Jersey, and um, he uh, was one of the prominent session players in the New York scene uh, in the, I want to say, probably the early 70s straight through the like the late 90s that's when the new york scene was really you know 
um, fertile. I mean, those cats, I mean, I, I missed that scene. I, I came back down. I grew up in Fort Lee, went to, up to Boston, went to Berserkly, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, taught there for a few years, came back down. By that time, to break into that scene was um, like trying to break into Fort Knox, I guess, because there was a... a you know, it it was a, it was a pretty tight knit group, but he was he was there at the ground floor with a lot of the great 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 people that are his his uh, pals. Um, his name is John Trope. Uh, he, um, you know, you'll see him on albums to his credit. Uh, he was he was um, on some really great great hits. Fifty Ways to Leave Your Lover. Um, you know, uh, he started out in the in that scene with the likes of Will Lee, the bassist Will Lee, who you know from the David Letterman show, uh, Cornell Dupree, uh, Steve um, Steve Gadd, the great drummer, uh, uh, one of the guitar players, Eric Gale, uh, David uh, Dave Spinoza, um, Jeff Miranoff. Uh, I mean, it was like yo, know, it's the who's who of ever looking at the liner notes back. Um, you know, back in the day when you still bought records, you know, um, I always, you know, I, I, I joke with him because, um, I kind of lived under his shadow, uh, him being a f you know, few years older than me, uh, when I got to Fort Lee high school and was playing in the high school stage band, then everybody would say, oh yeah, John Trope, you know, he was the hot guitar player at Fort Lee high school. And now you are or whatever, or. Or, or maybe one of the hot guitar players, because my school had a lot of good guitar players. You know, uh, Stevie Usher, great, great guitar player. It was down in Florida. Um, uh, all from my my class, or the classes bef uh, slightly after me, or slightly before. John John was about five years older, so he was already a high school when I got there. And then when I went off to Berkeley, of course, they'd say, where you from? I'd say Fort Lee, and they'd say, so how's Trope? You know, I had maybe spoke to him on the phone or whatever. But uh, as years progressed, we eventually worked together and had a trio for a long time um, with a number of great, great, great bass players. Um, it was uh, two guitars and, and upright bass most of the time, no drummers. Um, and we had, you know, we had, you know, the likes of, let me see if I, I, have, I wrote these names of the different bass players. Mike Richmond, great bass player, was with Miles Davis. Nicky Parrott spent years playing bass with, uh, with um, Les Paul. Uh, Jay Linhart, great, pay, great bass player. Cameron Brown. Sue Williams, who I played with last week, who actually got a chance to play on the Crossroads thing with uh, Eric Clapton. Link Milliman, Brian Glassman, Bill Morey. So I got the, uh, you know, those were different bass players that we used in our trio, and the trio was myself and trope and i might have a picture here because i have a bunch of pictures i'm going to be throwing up uh on the um uh yeah this one is pretty uh pretty tough to blow up but here's trope and i with mr link millman uh at one of our our gigs i was playing my old 1947 l5 that i no longer have I sold it through Mr. Rudy Penza, um, but uh, so so uh, you know I'm plugging that you come in and and you and you take part in that chat. Well, you know we we may just fiddle a little bit with gu guitars, but it's mostly chats. I I want him to 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 pass on the stories of that era because a lot of cats are not hip to it. A lot of younger people, are young younger players, are not hip to those those guys that were on that scene. That. I mean, some of them did 24 record dates a week. So it was a really fertile time. And whether they were doing jingles or they were, you know, doing tracks for Paul Simon or for Laura Nero or, you know, for the box tops or the, or the I don't know. I mean, I, I, I go through and every time I hear a, a hit from him, I go, is that Trope <laughs> or is that Spinoza? And pretty much if I had the record albums, you'd look. Or um, the other guy, uh, Hugh McCracken, another great guy um, from that era. Uh, you know, um, so, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of the uh, Richard T., Leon Pendarvis. You know him from being the leader in the Saturday Night Live band. Uh, but they were all in that circle of doing all that stuff. So that's going to be Saturday's hang uh, this Saturday at noon. Um, a lot of fun stories. You know, Tro Tropes and I got together again, and um, and uh, he lives down the Jersey Shore. 
and we we uh, did a little quick sound check and we started BSing from that point. And after an hour later, we said, I guess we talked ourselves out of whatever we're going to talk about. But there's a lot of clever stories um, that uh, uh, he'll share. And, um, you know, oh, there's my buddy Hank. He just popped in. And um, uh, so so that's Saturday. Any questions about any of the stuff I did with, with tearing apart some of the Ray stuff, the genius of Ray Charles, you know, before I... Uh, I uh, do a little do a little uh, uh, picking here to see if anybody uh, has any questions, and then uh, we'll call it a day, you know. You guys all good? Everybody good? Any more? No, no questions, huh? Well, thank you all for showing up. This is always fun. Uh, always fun. I hope I'm helping you guys jump up uh, a few rungs on the ladder. It certainly helps me. <laughs> You're welcome, Steve. Don't forget, uh, to tune in on, on Saturday if you can. I don't know what part of the globe you, you all are on, and if 12 o'clock on a Saturday is a tough uh, lift, um, you know, it's Eastern Standard Time. But uh, but tune in. It, it's going to be a lot of fun. You're welcome, Ed. 
Thank you for coming. Thank you for showing up. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, Torpe and I have a lot of fun. It's always fun uh, getting together, and, and uh, that trio was a lot of fun. We did a lot of standards and a lot of blues-based standards, and we rocked the house with just two guitars and upright bass, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So try to tune in, and I'll remind you, or whoever is not there, uh, you'll be reminded about my, my Monday thing, um, and then that'll give you guys enough for the last, for the few weeks that I'm, I'm uh, uh, out of the loop to mess with, and I'll give you all a heads up on what the next one is. I think I'm going to isolate some of the stuff. Um, yeah, it's 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 recorded, you know. I I just I just keep spewing out stuff, and uh, I'm pretty excited. You know, I, I like sharing all this stuff. Uh, I'll show you a little ditty I was messing with before you guys jump off. You know, I was doing this uh, two seconds ago, so I was like, okay, here's C7. Okay, that's all C7, because I'm, here's the root, here's the fifth, here's the C, I mean, so that's another root, here's the third, right? So, so if I'm going, there's the flat seven. So here. All right, so here's, real slow, here's G, it's a G minor seven, or G minor six, which you all talked about, right? I went G minor seven, G minor six. Now. Here's how my ear works anyway. So I just brought it back to that. Now watch. Hear this. Hear this. Hear this. So it's just the, the root, the second second of the nine, the third. Okay? Now I'm going to turn that into something. I was messing with it before I came on. <laughs> so if that was George, George would say... Oh, I found another toy, another invention. Here, see if I can do it again for you. Uh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, playing guitar, what, what would life be without one? Um, all right, everybody. Uh, you know, have have a great week. I hope to see you see you at Saturday. Uh, uh, you know, pass it on if you like what you've done. Uh, pass on this as people are subscribed to the channel. I uh, that that's, uh, that 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 um, looms large, having enough following and um, you know in the world of of YouTube, and um, you know tell your friends to tune in, um, and uh, tell your friends to tune in to not only this on uh, of what I do uh, on my little personal stuff but to uh, to gear up about the uh, about the guitar chats and take part in the guitar chats man any questions and stuff uh both i and of course john will be happy to qu answer all right uh stay well stay safe um peace and um i will chat with you all uh soon enough be well